Hello everyone man, welcome back to Tech Block. Today we are continuing on with the Rebuilding My Gaming Setup series. We're nearly done, just a few little things to finish up and just do. So, we've ran into a bit of an issue with the Razer Wireless Charger. It uh, doesn't really want to work with other like USB Type-C chargers. The only way I've managed to get it to work is by plugging it directly into its, you know, Razer Wireless Charger that it actually came with. Everything else uh, seems to not work at all. Like, the charger will light up, but it won't charge your phone, which obviously is a goddamn problem. So, we're not going to use our own Type-C cable, we're going to use Razer's own cable, but uh, in order to get it all to work the way I want it to work, we're going to have to use this monstrosity here that I've set up. So at the top here we have the Type-C Razer wireless charger that is plugged into a smart plug that is then plugged into an extension cable that is also plugged into another extension cable. So just a lot of extension wires and stuff, but it all works and it allows you to achieve what I want to achieve. So uh, let's stick this beneath my desk, this whole monstrosity. I've already put like some double-sided uh, adhesive on here. So we can hopefully, you know, get this stuck on there and it won't fall off and all. But yeah, let's quickly finish this up and get that wireless charger all working once again. Right, let's peel this off and uh, stick this somewhere nearby as the Type-C cable isn't very long. So it kind of comes out like right here. So we're going to plug it in and uh, you can't see on camera, but there we go. The phone will then turn green. Well, the charger will turn green, indicating that it's charging. There we go. And then we'll have a rainbow wave effect. There we go, it's all working very well. So now we just have to kind of cable manage it all and you know, neatly tidy this up. So I'm gonna probably stick this, uh, let's say right here. Now this is a kind of heavy setup of like stuff. Like, you know, we have this guy, this guy, and then an extension cable. So I hope this holds. Now I'm not too sure if this is actually going to hold very well as there's not much double-sided like tape on there. And uh, the reason it's kind of on its side as well is that I didn't want this to kind of like, you know, be visible and be sticking out here if I stuck it on normally. So yeah, it's kind of on its side, uh, so I don't know if it's going to hold, but hopefully it does. Uh, anyway, we have to cable manage this cable and then we'll be done with the whole wireless charger situation. Uh, so let's just, you know, grab this cable, you know, uh, tie it up and then kind of stick it on to, you know, the other cables here with some Velcro cable ties. Alright, so we have the Type-C Razer wireless charger, the smart plug, the power extension cable that then plugs into uh, the, you know, this entire section here, which is, you know, just like power extensions and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's all set up. That's all good. We do have to sort out this whole uh, electrical tape thing though, so we're going to sort that out in a minute. But apart from that, at least my wireless charger is now working as expected. So uh, by default, it's got like a white color. Then when you pop your phone on there, it'll turn green, indicating that, yo, I'm charging, dude. And then it'll go into a wave effect mode just like that. It's so sick, dude. But yeah, that's all done. Now we have to sort out this whole electrical tape area, so we're gonna use more electrical tape to hold down the other bits of electrical tape, just like that. <laughs> All right, so the setup is pretty much done. I'm gonna walk you through everything in here right now. And if you wanna go check out any of the products that I'm about to feature, all the links are down below in the description. So pretty much every single product in this setup, including the desks and all, down below in the description. So let's jump straight into it. We have an ASUS monitor here. This is the ASUS VN247HA. It's a 1920 by 1080p, 60 hertz monitor. It's 24 inches, but I do plan on upgrading these two monitors as they are identical to 27 inch monitors, probably from MSI, as they will be similar in size to the BenQ one in terms of like, you know, vertical size. So they should then, you know, perfectly align and uh, yeah, it should look real good once I do upgrade these outer two monitors. And then as for my main display over here, we have the BenQ EX3501R. It is a 35 inch curved ultra wide, uh, 3440 by 1440p resolution, 100 hertz refresh rate, HDR, AMD FreeSync. Uh, you can plug it in via Type-C if you want to. It's a beautiful monitor. Would highly recommend this one. Thank you so much for BenQ for actually sending this out to me. I've had this monitor for so long now and uh, very, very glad. Oh. <laughs> everything just fell asleep and i'm very very glad to have this as my main display like it's so good for gaming as well as of course productivity just the fact that it's an ultra wide is like brilliant for like adobe premiere and all as your timeline can stretch across this entire display and it's you know real good and then as for my soundbar beneath here we have a sound blaster x katana 7.1 virtual surround sound soundbar paired with the subwoofer back there which has an led strip behind it uh, so yeah, that's the soundbar. We also have an Amazon Echo Spot with a custom tech block Razer skin, I guess. It has like RGB and all. It's pretty sick. Link in the description to where you can buy this product as well as the skin as well. Moving on, we have some peripherals over here, beginning with the Razer wireless charger. 
talked about this earlier in the video, we have an Elgato Stream Deck, very, very good for video editing and all that good stuff with shortcuts and macros. We have the Razer Huntsman Elite Mechanical Gaming Keyboard featuring the Razer Purple. Opto Mechanical Switches, they're freaking amazing. They sound real nice too. They have a 45 gram actuation force and it's just like so sick dude, look at all that underglow adding on the keyboard wrist stress. And this keyboard is sitting on top of the Razer Goliathus Extended Chroma Mouse Mat. And then over here we have a mouse mat that sits on top of that other mouse mat. So this is the Razer Firefly Hyperflux Mouse Mat. This is no regular Firefly. Uh, so this mouse mat charges this mouse over here. This is a wireless charging mouse. This is the Razer Mamba Hyperflux Mouse. Uh, so, you know, when you buy this mouse, you get this mouse mat as a combo. So, you know, this mouse mat can charge the mouse and it's, it's just a real nice mouse. It never dies. I posted a full review on my channel if you want to go check it out. Uh, pressing the card up here if you want to go watch the full review of this mouse. It's like, I've had it for a year now and it's, it's still in great condition. Moving on, we have the Razer Chroma Mug. This is the newest addition to my setup. It's a very rare collectible piece from Razer. I've currently got some monster that I've poured into here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's so sick, dude. It has RGB. It alerts me to drink every 10 minutes, uh, so it's just pretty sick, dude. Moving on, we have the Razer Base Station, or the Razer uh, Chroma Headset Stand, as most people would probably call it. Uh, it's just an RGB headset stand. And then over here, we have the Razer Nari Ultimate Headset sitting on top of the Razer Headset Stand. Moving on, we have my microphone here. People ask me now and again what microphone I use. This is hardly ever in use, but it's kind of in my setup in case I ever need to do like a voiceover video. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 microphone. I've put a pop filter on this microphone just like this. We have a like a plastic shock mount for it and then a very, very cheap uh, like desk mount arm thing for the microphone as well. Moving on behind the monitors though, we have some very exciting LED lighting over here. We have the Philips Hue Play Bars. I have three of them. We have one here one there and then one over there so they kind of add like some cool lighting behind the monitor and at night it looks real nice and then behind the desk of course we have another led strip for philips hue uh, this goes around like the entire desk and then as i mentioned earlier we have the subwoofer over there as well and uh, yeah we have some led strips behind that as well also from philips hue so we can control all the led strips in the setup including those uh philips hue play light bars via Razer Synapse or the Synapse on our PC, which is always nice. And then over here we have a bed with Philips Hue LED strips that are unfortunately falling off, which is a shame. Anyway, let's take a look at the care management and just see how this all works. Right, so beside the bed, we have two power sockets. Everything in my setup is powered by these two things, so it's all good. We have a micro filter for my ADSL connection for my internet, so that's that and then two power cables. So one power cable, which is this dude over here, that goes directly into my PC, whereas the other one goes into a power extension cable. So that power extension, uh, it's like a six port one from Best Tech. Now the cable management back here, uh, not so good, but doesn't really matter too much as this is kind of out of sight, out of mind. So we have six sockets over there behind the bed and I've populated every single one of them. So one of them is for the bed, one of them is for the smart curtains that are over here so you know we can open and close our curtains via my Amazon Echo. So unfortunately it's not connected to the Wi-Fi at the moment as I, I forgot to connect the curtains to the Wi-Fi but we can use the remote still so we can close the curtains via a remote or our voice or an app on our phone but it's not connected to the Wi-Fi at the moment so I need to set that up again but uh, yeah we have curtains up there and then a bunch of these sockets go into the setup through a cable trunking kit, which you can barely see, right? It's kind of like beneath this radiator here. It's this plastic piece, basically. This has a bunch of cables inside that are nicely hidden away inside of this channel here. So, you know, out of sight. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. So all the cables from here, or at least a few of the cables from that section go through this plastic cable channel into uh, some more power extensions, as well as, you know, like into my PC. My, my ethernet cable is running through here as well. But I'd definitely say that we managed to cable manage everything here quite nicely. Like all this section here is looking real nice as well as, you know, like all of this. Like when you're at this angle, things aren't really dangling or anything anymore like they used to be. Over here in this section of my desk, we have like some more spare USB ports up here. We have a micro SD card reader, another one, as well as a full size UHS-2. Full size SD card reader, you know, all the cables nicely cable managed back here. We have a few holes in the desk. We have one for the keyboard here, as well as this device, this device, as well as this mouse mat as well. And then we have another hole for the mouse and mouse mat combo. So, you know, this just goes into here. Very nice, pretty cool. So this whole cable management project that I've been trying to do for so long now, it's finally like pretty much done. Like, I don't know what else I could really improve here. Uh, like, it's all real good. I'm very happy with it, basically. And uh, the next thing for the setup, I guess, is 
to probably add like some nano leaf aurora light panels up here as this wall is definitely looking a bit plain and then when we hit 100,000 subs which I hope is sometime soon we are gonna put the silver play button over there and then add a bunch of Philips ULED strips behind it and just make it RGB because that's what you got to do. So I'm planning on putting the silver play button above the PC there and then the nano leaf aurora light panels above the monitors here and then we should be good. And then of course, you know, the monitors here, these two outer Asus monitors do need to be replaced to 27 inch monitors from probably like MSI or something so that they all look, you know, good and there's no like, you know, strange gap right here that kind of triggers some people and triggers me too. But uh, I mean, this setup, even with these kind of like wonky monitors, it doesn't look too bad. Like I think, uh, like I think it works, you know? And then as to the PC build over here, in case you're wondering what the specs are, uh, press any card right there or over there to go watch the full PC build video. It's uh, it's pretty sick. I put a lot of effort into that video. So if you want to go check out what the PC specs are, uh, we have two graphics cards in there and all. So uh, just watch that video there. But apart from that though, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to go check out any of the products that I featured today, all the links are down below in the description as always. Apart from that though, thanks for watching and hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.